Eagle 95.1, WUPN, Paradise, Sault Ste. Marie. It's time for The Game. Eagle 95.1 proudly brings you The Game, the Twin Zoo's only regional and national sports show. For the next hour, we'll get an in-depth look at sports in the eastern Upper Peninsula and Algoma region. The Game on Eagle 95.1. Sports Show would like to thank an additional home to the game Sports Show, Canadian franchise Boston Pizza. Boston Pizza Sault Ste. Marie located on 601 Great Northern Road, Sault Ste. Marie. Come in and join Boston Pizza for its numerous specials that are offered. After 9 p.m. daily, come in to Boston Pizza for $9 schooners, $4 rail drinks, and delicious food. Boston Pizza Sault Ste. Marie, you're among friends. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the game Sports Show. January the 25th edition here live at Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. And we got a great crowd here at Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, as we do every Thursday. It's yours truly, David McKeg, a.k.a. the Kegger here live at Boston Pizza. And we got quite the action show here planned tonight at Boston Pizza. And of course... I'm going to give a shout-out to all our sponsors and everyone who's a part of the show tonight. We've got great staff here at Boston Pizza, Aaron Grizdak, and, of course, Mitch Wilson on duty here at Boston Pizza. Scott Nason being the board operator tonight. I definitely, of course, got to thank Boston Pizza for being a new sponsor on the Game Sports Show. And you know what? We have a lot going on here at Boston Pizza, a lot of things planned, and they have a lot of promotion going on. And I must say, they have their Super Bowl party planned called the Big Game Party. And more details are going to be released next week. But the door prize is going to be a big smart TV. And throughout the weekdays, after 9 p.m., they have half-price starters. They have $9 schooners for Canadian Coors Molson products. And they have $4 bar rails. And on Saturday, they're going to have live bands starting in February as well that you for sure do not want to miss to make complete your Saturday night and get the Sioux all lived up for. But I must also... State that there's more sponsors on the Game Sports Show alongside, of course, Canadian franchise Boston Pizza. We have Sports Center Bar and Grill here located in Sault Ste. Marie, where myself and Jamie Antonello actually had the In the Pocket segment and basketball talk yesterday. And we record at Sports Center on Wednesdays. We also have the Wicked Sister and Pingator Cleaners. The Wicked Sister, where we record Mondays at 6 p.m. to 7, and it's live on 95.1, the Eagle 95.1, and from 7 to 8 we pre-record the second hour to talk about your professional enjoyment with the 6 to 7 version being with the local sports and of course like I said we're here Thursdays at Boston Pizza talking hockey local hockey and we're talking baseball when it is baseball season where we record at 9 30 to 10 30 additional sponsors I gotta thank Discover the Canvas the Salon the Sioux Pee Wee Pro Shop and North Shore Sports and Auto for their contributions to the game sports show as well we have a website if you all didn't hear, we have a website that is getting launched. And it's going to be launched by the end of this month. It's going to be www.thegamesportshow.com. And you know what? There's a lot going on there with the Game Sports Show and the website. going to say right now that website is going to be fantastic. That is being assisted from a professional website designer, I like to say, IT specialist, more so like to say Andre LaFrancois we're going to have merchandise sold on the website we're going to have all the shows from the Monday show at the Wicked Sister we're going to have the Wednesday show from Sports Center and the Thursday show from Boston Pizza all on that page we're going to have an About Me page we're going to have interactions we're going to have all up to date sports God there's a lot that you're going to be able to follow with the Game Sports Show all the shows are going to be on there along with being on snason.potomatic.com and you know what Lots to be able to listen to. We have all the previous shows that are going to be updated on the website. In particular, a lot of special interviews that I had with Joe Bowen previously and Jim Leland, the GM of the Tigers previously. And interviews uh, with uh, Colin Miller from before. Uh, you know, lots of good stuff that we had previously going on. And you know what? We have some more stuff going on with the show. We have good announcements when it comes to interviews. 
You know, today we have a very special guest coming on the show, Jamie Henderson. As you know, last week we had Joey Miller. Future shows, we have Joe Bowen coming on. We have Tyler Kennedy coming on. We have Paul Maurice coming on. All the dates are going to be within from now to the February range. And next week, we plan to have the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, some Boris Kachuk and Taylor Radish we expect to have here next week on the show, on the Game Sports Show here live at Boston Pizza as well. And a couple other details that I can't forget. I have to tell you, the trivia that was announced on last week's show, the winner of the trivia question for name four jerseys, in Boston Pizza are the 10 jerseys they have at the Sports Bar side. And we did get a lot of traffic with answers, but the individual that answered first was da 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 Christian Gassi. Christian Gassi was the first person to bring in the news in terms of what four jerseys were here at Boston Pizza. So congratulations to Christian Gassi. He has won a large pizza from Boston Pizza that gets delivered to his door free of charge but make sure, Christian, that you tip that driver for getting that nice, delicious pizza. And i got to give you a little suggestion, Christian. Order the spicy pierogi pizza they have, that new on menu. It is absolutely delicious. And speaking of the show tonight, we have an action-packed show. As I mentioned a couple seconds ago, Jamie Henderson will be coming on by, and he's actually just coming in the door right now. And we're going to be talking about Sue Minor Thunderbirds. He is the head coach. We're talking about this season and talk about his contributions in the community with hockey and tournaments coming up on behalf of Silver Creek and for Sue St. Marie that he is running and obviously to catch up with an old friend of mine. And he is the second official live guest here at Boston Pizza with a big list of guests coming on up with the Game Sports Show. Then afterwards, I got Dane and I got Justin. They're just waiting outside right now, sipping on some good Molson products, and they're going to be joining me with the show where we're going to talk local hockey, Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, and of course, the longer part of the show with the segment, we're going to be talking about professional hockey where we have lots and lots of news to touch with. And as you can tell, we have an action-packed show and we usually have an icebreaker conversation between myself, Dane, and Justin. But this week, due to the guests and due to the amount of criteria we're hitting on, we're skipping that this week and saving the icebreaker conversation for next week. So once again, the winner to Christian Gassi winning the trivia for a free large pizza. And we're going to have another trivia question that's going to get announced at the last segment at the beginning of this show. So make sure you get that trivia. I'm not going to tell you what the question is right now because you have to wait till the last part of the show. The question is going to be announced, and there'll be a prize. They'll be given to you and announced next week on behalf of Boston Pizza. And like I said, Christian won a free large pizza sent to his door. That could be you with a prize of equal or a prize even better or a prize that you really will enjoy. Once again, you remember that they have the after 9 p.m., the $4 bar rails and half-price starters here at Boston Pizza after 9 p.m., I must say, $9 schooners for Canadian and Coors Molson products. A lot of great things going on here at Boston Pizza for sure. Dave McCaig here. I'm going to step away for a couple seconds. We're going to listen to a word from our sponsors. And I'm going to bring in Jamie Henderson. And we're going to talk local Sioux Minor Midget Sioux Thunderbirds from the head coach of that team, Jamie Henderson. You don't want to go away because we have a lot to talk about and a lot to talk about on the show in general. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional home to the Game Sports Show. Canadian franchise Boston Pizza. Boston Pizza Sault Ste. Marie, located on 601 Great Northern Road, Sault Ste. Marie. Come in and join Boston Pizza for its numerous specials that are offered. After 9 p.m. daily, come in to Boston Pizza for $9 schooners, $4 rail drinks, and delicious food. Boston Pizza Sault Ste. Marie, you're among friends. The Mr. Electric Avenue segment brought to you by Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill, located on 624 Wellington Street, West Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. You can't miss Sports Center's famous Monday, Wednesday, 60 cent wing nights. Sports Center Bar and Grill. Great atmosphere, great food, great cold beverages available, and great service. The home to the Mr. Electric Avenue segment. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. And welcome back to the Game Sports Show. It's yours truly, David McKaig. You just heard from Justin Heichel and Dane Hanschel with myself in the introduction of the show. I'm giving them a little bit of a break here, and I got a very special guest to the right of me right now. Somebody who knows me quite well in the realm of hockey. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. <laughs> Jamie Henderson, the current head coach of the Sioux Minor Midget Thunderbirds. Jamie, welcome to the show, and how are you doing, my friend? Good, Dave. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, look forward to talking to you here. It's been a little bit of a while. You've had a child, you know, since I've last seen you. Congratulations with that. How is the little man doing? He's uh, a future first-rounder, I think. I don't know. No, he's uh, five months old now. It's been great, and uh, 
busy juggling hockey and uh, family and uh, and all that, but it's been great. He's been uh, a welcome addition for sure. And now you're still in the realm of hockey, and when it comes to you, Hendo, I think of a lot of great things that you've done for hockey and the community, for the youth especially. Um, you know, I was around back in the day when you joined the Sioux Thunderbirds back in 09, I believe it was the correct year, if I remember at the top of my head correctly, as assistant coach, and you moved up with Mitzi, and then you, you won, went to Dudley Hewitt, you had the opportunity to go to the RBC, and now you're still in the youth hockey realm with Sioux Minor Midget Sioux Thunderbirds. You have annual hockey tournaments for uh, with Silver Creek and a lot of things going on. Um, you know, how important is it to you to stay in the world of hockey in Sault Ste. Marie and give back to the community that way? Well, you mentioned a lot of things there, so it's uh, it's obviously pretty important. Kind of two different things there. Uh, coaching is one thing, um, but we love the, uh, the charity work that we do at the golf course. I've been at Silver Creek now as the general manager for five years. And it's something we started in my first year. We run two charity events, uh, one the Silver Creek Cup, which is an indoor. And then uh, we had a crazy idea um, five years ago to start an outdoor tournament. And at that time, we built three rinks actually in a parking lot. And then um, we decided to uh, scale that down to one larger one. So our fifth annual, we just had our fifth annual in December, Silver Creek Cup. Uh, and then the fifth annual Little Caesars Winter Classics coming up uh, in a couple weeks too. So... Super proud of that. Uh, that really uh, goes to help local youth out. The Thunderbirds and the coaching and the, the management, all that other stuff is, uh, is great as well. But that's really, uh, I love doing that. I love doing both, but definitely pretty fulfilling when you get to help out kids in, in our community. Absolutely. And the big thing is, like I said, and I think you and I have had this discussion before, before we jump into the meat and potatoes of what you do with the Thunderbirds, is that youth hockey may not be the same as what it used to be in Sault Ste. Marie. And, you know, it's when you have someone like yourself that has these tournaments that tries to get the youth involved, it's important. This is this has always been such a big hockey town from what I can recall. And I, and I, I will say, professionally speaking, that over the years that it has it has descended. It hasn't been the same in Sault Ste. Marie as maybe in previous years, but individuals like yourself are giving back and trying to keep that youth hockey at getting back up in Sault Ste. Marie. Do you feel that it's different than what it used to be, or do you, uh, are, are you proud of what Sioux hockey still is? That's a loaded question there. Um, I, I think it's, all, I think it's, it's been great. It's, 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 it's still great. You know, we, we sometimes forget how fortunate we are living in a city, you know, um, where we have so many people that care. That's the big thing. Like, there's so many people that are passionate about about the game, about youth hockey. And I think more than anything, like social media and, you know, uh, people being able to kind of voice their opinions publicly um, is probably the biggest difference. I mean, were there issues 20 years ago? I'm sure there were. We just maybe didn't know about them as much, right? And now it's kind of right in the forefront. So I think hockey is still great. There's going to be times where we have, uh, you know, uh, birth years that aren't as talented. It doesn't mean they don't love the game or they're not going to, you know, grow up to love the game like we do, you know, still and still play. And that's really, at the end of the day, we, we love to see kids and watch them on TV like we're watching tonight. But at the end of the day, to have kids love the game and keep playing until they're, you know, I'm going be 41 years old this year and still love to play. I mean, that to me, that's the biggest thing. And if they're, they get better and they progress, then, then great. For sure. Dave McKay here at Boston Pizza alongside Jamie Henderson, the head coach of the Sioux Minor Thunderbirds. And Jamie, we're going to jump into kind of, you've coached certain individuals that have moved up in the realm of hockey. You've coached uh, Boris Kachuk with the Thunderbirds. You've been around uh, with Mario when he was within the system. Uh, how good is it to see these type of players? I've been with the Sioux Thunderbird system, minor midgets, uh, AAA ju junior moving up, and to get to play in, as Boris did this year, at the World Juniors, and how Grady is doing with the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, obviously. Mario, who just got uh, goaltender honors uh, with the OHL there. So great to see those type of players. That's the rewarding work with this program. We've had a lot of good p players come out of the Thunderbird program as well that didn't go places. One name that comes to mind is definitely Jerry Patingalo. I wasn't going to say Dave McKaig. <laughs> uh, but how rewarding is that to see from uh, from the coaching end of it? Yeah, well, I was involved with the, uh, the junior team for a while, and I was actually in management when Boris and Mary were there. We, um, we won the uh, Dudley Hewitt in uh, 2015, I believe it was, and uh, Jordan Smith was the head coach then, and uh, uh, Jeremy Rebick and Kyle Brick and and um, Ryan Monu. So we had an unbelievable staff first and first and foremost. And 
Boris came to us as a second round pick of the Greyhounds, and uh, he was a special player. Like you could tell right away, he was a special player, and uh, he controlled the play in the in the NOJHL at, a, at 16, which not many players can do, as you know. Um, and you know, you never know with with the Greyhound picks or any OHL picks how their attitude's going to be. But he had a great attitude, and he wanted to be a player. You know, you could just tell when someone wants to be a player. And then Mario, you know, same kind of uh, same, but but different in that he wasn't even drafted. You know, he had a lot of tools for some reason. You know, every once in a while, his players fall through the cracks. But give Mario credit. He has worked and worked and worked and worked. I know him and Jamie DeZano do a lot of work in the summer times. And when I ran the pro skates in the summer, I mean, Mario would be there every day and working hard. And so, you, you know, you get, those guys are deserving of everything that they've received right now. Mario just getting player the goalie of the week. And Boris obviously being drafted to Tampa and, being one of the top guys in the world juniors and um so it's great to see you know Owen, Owen Hedrick's doing amazing things with with Erie in his overage year you know we had him with the Lakers last year when I was fortunate to be there last year but that's probably the most rewarding thing of all the time I think back to the early years with the Thunderbirds you know the Jerry Patinglos, Mike Doan obviously Corey Jackson's Jerry Patinglos, you know uh, Corey Jackson still playing CIS it's his last year Kevin Michael Cavage. I mean, we had so many quality guys, but good guys. You know what I mean? Quality individuals. And the relationships, when they come back to the Sioux, we still get together in the in the summer. And that, to me, is what it's all about. Yeah. It for sure is. And definitely have kept a lot of close friendships, especially with that squad that we had. Uh, for sure. Even though I like to call that year the most disappointing year, losing that year to the border rivals, Sioux Eagles, or should I say Jake Patterson, that we lose to. Uh, but get into what you currently do in. I want to give you the floor in terms of, you know, with how this season's going, previous games and upcoming games with the Sioux Thunderbirds. Yeah, this was a new program. So uh, in, in May, uh, it was decided that Sioux Major would want a minor midget team. And um, they asked me to, uh, to take over the team and to coach. And uh, I had an opportunity to go back to the Lakers. But I thought it was, uh, I, I wanted to be part of, a new program to start something right out right from you know from the bottom and I knew uh, a lot of the players I'd worked with them before and I know a lot of their dads you know so there were some relationships there which made it a little bit easier but uh, anytime you're starting off with a new program there's going to be growing pains and but uh, our kids have been been awesome and that we were accepted in the great north midget league so we're a minor midget team playing in a great north or in the major midget loop uh, so there's us in Sudbury and North Bay and then there's uh you know, Capus Casey, New Lisker, North Bay, Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, and Timmins, uh, the major midget team. So we play them as well. And so some nights it goes well and some nights it uh, it doesn't go well. But I think, uh, you know, besides maybe two or three games, we've been competitive every night. Um, the players have, have bought into what we're trying to do. And at this age, it's all about skill development. We put aside the egos and trying to win games. And it's about making 19 hockey players better, you know, not just the top three or four guys it's every single player trying to get better and hopefully we succeeded you know our record isn't uh great but i think uh you know we've been competitive and uh i, I hope i hope when the players walk away they walk away better people and, and better players and hopefully they have an opportunity next year to move up absolutely and i feel when we were off air we we're talking about you do have games coming up this uh upcoming weekend correct uh next week we play uh, two our two last games are are in sudbury so we play tuesday in sudbury Saturday in Sudbury against the Miners. Last night we played the local major midget team, the Greyhounds, and we were down 2-0, uh, came back, tied it up, and unfortunately we lost in overtime. So I think that's our fourth overtime loss this year in three-on-three. Three. So I think, the, I think the coach better figure out a new uh, strategy for, for overtime. But, uh, you know, our kids fought. We had a really devastating injury. We were minus one of our best players to suspension, and uh, we just battled all night, and that's what they've done. I'd say 99% of the games this year, and that's all you can ask for as a coach is, you know, you want players that are coachable, that uh, want to listen, and they really want to get better. And uh, for the most part, we've had that this year. And so it's been really rewarding. We'll see what happens next year. We'll decide that in the next couple of weeks. But, um, you know, we're really happy with where we've been. And like I said, hopefully these kids have, have learned a lot and can move on to the next level. Absolutely. And, you know, you talked, you said some points about coaching staff there. Obviously, you know, your role, but you have – 
Lane Burton, who's your assistant, and you have the Sutterettos, a part of your staff, individuals that I know well, Mickey being an assistant, Sutter, or Mickey being assistant coach of uh, your team, then Greg being the trainer of your team. What, how have they contributed uh, uh, to yourself? I'm sure they've been a great contribution to the organization, um, and I'm sure they've developed a lot as coaches, being under yourself, who's had great experiences as well. That's the one thing, uh, you know, I was fortunate when I started with the Thunderbirds, obviously there was Sean Gagnon when I started, and then, and then Preston. Um, you know, and then when I was in management, obviously Kevin Kane and Jordan Smith and Jeremy Rebick and all these guys to kind of pick different things from. And then last year with the Lakers was a huge learning experience for me. So when, when I took over this, really wanted to make sure we had a great staff. When I say great staff, that might even be understating it. Laners had a lot of experience with kids this age, which I didn't. You know, we coached at high school at St. Mary's back in the day, but even them, they're a little bit older. So Lane had a lot of experience. Mickey's, uh, you know, Mickey's still got it on the ice, uh, you know, being a, being a younger guy. So, you know, his pedigree in the OHL and uh, being obviously one of the best Thunderbirds that probably ever played, if not, you know, right up there, um, you know, leading us to an RBC. And so the kids see that on the ice. You know, when we jump into drills or we show them things, there's the instant credibility there. And Greg obviously has a lot of experience as well, uh, you know, getting to uh, RBC as well. So, you know, I think the players recognize uh, how much, the biggest thing is how much each – uh, staff member cares you know they're there all the time they're willing to to take the players one-on-one -on -one, li uh, willing to listen to them and we all understand that we're not going to be great every night you know our players aren't going to be great every night probably a little harder on them sometimes than than they they would like that's kind of you know but that's why you have great assistants to kind of you know i might be the bad cop every once in a while or our players might say most of the time and then uh and then, you know, we have Mickey and Laner or Greg to, to kind of come in and say, hey, you know what, like, it's going to be okay type of thing. So I think we've had a great, great year. We really good camaraderie with the staff. We, we all love hockey. At the end of the day, we love hockey. And we love to talk about hockey. And we love to figure out ways to get better. And so uh, it's been a really good dynamic. I think they feel comfortable in, in offering ideas to me. You know, that's the one thing I learned over the years with coaches. You know, I, I would hate for an assistant to not – be able to come up with a, uh, an idea or a new approach or something because at the end of the day we, we want to try different things, see what works best and uh, all the, the different places I've been, I think those dynamics work the best when everyone feels like they contribute and all of our guys know that they're a big part so it's been really good. Absolutely, and you know what? Uh, <laughs> with the with the organization, you want to you want to see growth and see the players move on. That's the most important thing. Being a coach, and is there goals going into next year? I know it's not always the best to look forward, but you know, starting this program basically it's fresh this year. Obviously, you want to see improvements or processes going forward. What are your goals looking beyond today? I, I think, like I said earlier, the um, at the end of the year, hopefully, our players are better people. Number one. You know, we've uh, we've helped them off the ice, but they've they've got better. And you know, that might be for one player making AAA, and that might be their AAA major midget. That might be their their ceiling, and that's fine. For others, it could be the OHL. You know, I, you know, we have a player right now, uh, say Jack Matier. Well, you know, Jack's gonna have a good chance to be a, a really good player. You know, we have a few other, you know, goalie Noah Zepp, uh, you know, Justin. Moore. We have Nathan Hedrick. We have different players that have, uh, you know, higher ceilings. And it's up to them how much they want to commit to it. You know, I, we all know players who had a lot of talent, didn't make it. And we know players with less talent who just would not say no. And, you know, I give our guys examples of the Pilon twins that are in Sudbury in the OHL. Not drafted, played for us, played for me in the Thunderbirds. Um, just wouldn't, refused to let people tell them they weren't good enough to play in the OHL. So I never want to put a ceiling on any of our players at 15. It's too young. It's what they're willing to do off the ice between, you know, basically all year round, but now it, it ends up being. But, you know, once the season's over in March, how bad do you want it? You know, do you want to be a guy that's in the gym or do you want to be a guy that's out with your buddies till 3 in the morning missing it? And so, you know, hopefully the program continues to build. Uh, uh, academics is huge with us. And, um, you know, so we really want student athletes. And whether it's college, OHL, just major midget, the NOJHL, the May, the Junior A Thunderbirds, you know, it's a great organization. So any of those things, uh, but as long as they love the game, like we talked about, you and I both love the game. That's I want our players to continue to play and love the game. Absolutely. And, Jamie, we've got a couple more things we'll get to before we let you go. You have an event coming up. 
Uh, Northcrest Bowling Lanes, February 23rd. I'll let you kind of take the floor talking about that. Yeah, well, as you know, we all know it's a lot of money to run these uh, these minor hockey teams. So just a little fundraiser at the end of the year kind of to celebrate the year and all that. So uh, we're, uh, we're looking for each player to kind of get a team. But if somebody wants to put a team together, it's uh, $45 a person. You get to bowl for a couple hours. They tell me it's an exciting place on a Friday night at 9 o'clock under the lights at the, uh, you know, I'm not a big uh, professional bowler. I, I would care to say I would probably average about 100 if I took my 12 career bowling rounds. But uh, um, hopefully we can get a good turnout. And, uh, and as we talked about earlier, our, our winter classic through Silver Creek is, uh, is coming up, an event that really is near and dear to my heart. All the proceeds go to help uh, kids who uh, can't quite afford new equipment. We bring them down. We've probably outfitted about 40 kids the last five years with uh, new equipment down at Source for Sports. So it's my favorite day of the year, bar none. We bring kids down there and to see their faces light up with uh, new hockey equipment. You know, we, we probably love still getting new gear ourselves. But uh, when you can give a new pair of skates or a pair of gloves or a new stick to a 10-year-old who's never had a new pair of skates, it's a pretty cool feeling. So it's uh, hopefully we'll have a full event. We've been full every year, and we're kind of getting towards there now. And I uh, really look forward to it. Hopefully Mother Nature will cooperate. We've had cold. We've had snow. We've had warm. We've lost the ice one year. So hopefully, hopefully this year it looks like a good winter. So looking forward to it. Absolutely. And the last thing I'll touch on in terms of getting, you know, giving back to the kids especially is there's somebody that we both know, uh, Billy Conduro. Somebody that I had to say that wants to say hello to you that told me to make sure I did. And there's somebody that, you know, had a major impact of where I ended up playing. I mean, a major impact. And, you know, that hard work that you were going back to earlier, that is so big. That is when you want the game for sure. And I don't like going back on my past on anything. I know some listeners or even some of my friends may disagree, but the whole point of this is, Giving back and seeing the light uh, light up the face with the youth, that's great. And Billy wanted me to say hi to you. I had to make sure I did that. Yeah, perfect. Well, I skated with Billy today, actually. So, But, you know, I remember you and Billy working at the Pee Wee. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate to work with some players the last few years kind of on a one-on-one. When you wake up at 7 in the morning, uh, or not wake up, you get to the rink at 7, you want to put in the extra work and you want to be a player. You know, I've always had time for those type of people and uh, people that love the game. You have to love it. That's the thing. Like, if you don't love the game, you're not going to work at it. And that's the thing. And so that's our biggest job. You know, we talk about trying to make hockey great in the Sioux again. You got to make the kids love the game, love coming to the rink. And I got to remember that sometimes too, even with my own team is, you know, the more they love it, the more they're going to work at it. It's like anything in, in life. And, and uh, so hopefully we can do that. And I think it, we're on, we'll get on the right path here. We'll get, we'll get rolling again and, the Sioux will be kind of the uh, the hotbed of the North here, I think, before long. So we got to remember too, like we still have a lot of good players. I mean, you look at Colin Miller's having a career year this year. Mike Amadio just got called up again. Blake Spears in the OHL. You know, we have so many guys playing over in Europe. We have a lot of uh, players for these young guys to look up to. I talked about the Pilon twins. I talked about Mario Kalina, Owen Hedrick. You know, all these guys, and then the guys playing CIS. So there's a ton of guys playing hockey that these young guys can look up to and it's all different paths i say that all the time or for anyone who follows me on social media the twitter and that everyone has a different path you you know your path's different than the next person it's just if you love it you'll find your way exactly and you know what pretty soon your son before you know it is going to be playing he's going to get some good one-on-one training from yourself and jamie anyone could find you on your facebook there's jamie Hennish. you do a lot of promoting through social media with your players uh anywhere else anyone can meet or reach out to in terms of you know promotions game stuff for the thunderbirds or even for the tournament or even one-on-one training if anyone's interested in learning well we have uh, obviously uh, my personal stuff but the thunderbirds we have our our our, uh, Sioux, our Highland Ford Sue Thunderbird uh, page on Facebook and our Twitter handle as well as Sue, at Sue Minor Midget. So, and as you know, yeah, as I'm very active on that. It's been great, obviously, to promote events, to promote our program. Uh, GolfSilverCreek.com is our website at the golf course there. So it's a great, I've been lucky, I've been a golf pro now for 20 years. So it allows me to have a few months where I can just concentrate on hockey for a few, for a little while. It's golf and hockey, which gets to be pretty crazy at times. And so, Right now, it's kind of mostly just hockey, and we'll do our charity event, and then for long, the snow will be gone, and we'll be back to golf. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a great ride so far. 
Absolutely. Dave McKager alongside Jamie Henderson at Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie. Jamie, I want to say thanks for coming on by, taking the time. I'd like to get you on the show more as we go on and chat. It's always good to catch up. I want to say thanks for coming on by to the show. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And we'll be right back with myself, bringing Justin and Dane back in. We're going to be talking about a little bit more about local hockey, more so towards the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. And you don't want to touch that dial. I'll be right back here on the Game Sports Show. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional home to the Game Sports Show, Canadian franchise Boston Pizza. Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, located on 601 Great Northern Road, Sault Ste. Marie. Come in and join Boston Pizza for its numerous specials that are offered. After 9 p.m. daily, come in to Boston Pizza for $9 schooners, $4 rail drinks, and delicious food. Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, you're among friends. The Mr. Electric Avenue segment would also like to thank its additional sponsors. North Shore Sports and Auto, located on 30 Calaboogie Road, Neckel Bay, Ontario. Ran and operated by Ryan Jordan Rochetta. North Shore Sports and Auto, meeting all of your new and pre-owned equipment needs. We'd also like to thank the salon, located on 587 Second Line East, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Owned and operated by Mike Cuglietta. The salon, making the soup beautiful, one haircut at a time. We'd also like to thank the Superior Pro Shop, located in the Superior Arena on 285 Northern Avenue East, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Owned and operated by Jeremy Paquin and ran by Larry Monroe. For over 40 years, the Superior Pro Shop mean all of your skate sharpening, skate repairs, and hockey needs. And welcome back to the Game Sports Show. Yours truly, David McKeg. I want to thank Jamie Henderson for coming on by. What a great interview that was with Jamie. And good to catch up with him. And we wish him the best for the rest of the year. We're going to try to get Jamie on more throughout the year. Might even get him to talk a little bit about the Leaf side of things. We know he's a big Leaf fan. I'd like to hear an outside opinion from our opinions when it comes to the NHL portion, especially with the Leafs. we got Dane on my right. Justin on my left, bring you guys back into the picture with the Game Sports Show here tonight. And you know what? Like I said with this trivia question before, went to break on the first part. The trivia question is asked in the final portion of the show, so make sure you keep listening uh, as the question is going to be actually after this break, so you don't want to miss that for a chance to win a very fantastic prize on behalf of Boston Pizza. So I'm going to jump in here just for a second, a little bit alone, talking about some local sports in terms of the Sioux Eagles, Blind River Beavers, and the Sioux Thunderbirds. A little update on the NOJHL front. We know last week having Joey Miller on, assistant GM of the Sioux Thunderbirds. The Sioux Thunderbirds had a game against the Sioux Eagles on Saturday, January the 20th, and lost 3 nothing to the Sioux Eagles. And the Sioux Thunderbirds played Espinola Sunday, though, and a bounce back 11-2 to win. Uh, Sioux Michigan played Blind River. On Monday and lost 4-3, did the Eagles to those Beavers. But Sioux Michigan playing Wednesday, which was last night against Elliott Lake at the Polar Stadium, defeating them 5-2. to two. And tonight, I kind of want to mention a game that went on. Rayside Balfour beating Espinola 13-2 to two tonight. Wow, yikes. Uh, that is a pretty big shellacking from Rayside against Espinola. And it, it's really defined, as I said, with the Western side. The Sioux Thunderbirds leading the way with 59 points with only 40 games. Blind River, 45 games, and they have 56 points. Rayside being with 53 points in 40 games. Sioux Eagles have 51 points in 42 games. And the Elliott Lake Wildcats with 41. All five of those teams are... In the playoffs, Espinola is 139-1-1 this year for only four points. And on the eastern side, you got Powassan with a 33-6-1-2 and and two record with 69 points, actually leading the way in the NOJHL. But the Sioux Thunderbirds, Blind River, and Sioux Eagles are definitely games you don't want to miss in the Algoma region. Puller Stadium is one of the best stadiums to play in NOJHL. And also, the Sioux Thunderbirds are one of the more exciting teams to watch in NOJHL as well. Definitely great little hard-nosed action going into the playoffs very soon and the Sioux Thunderbirds like I said leading the charge in the West Division with a 28-9-2 and 1 record. That's been the NOJHL update. I'm going to bring back Justin and Dane and we're going to talk about the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Fellas, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds this past weekend had a rough road trip uh, to say the least. Losing 5-3 to Sarnia on Friday and losing 4-2 to Flint on Saturday a game that I'm sure the Hounds would love to have back, especially against Flint. And we've heard a lot of things in the Sioux this week about the team really working, try to get back to those winning ways this weekend. They play Friday tomorrow against Windsor at the SR Center. They play Saturday against Barry at the SR Center. Both games at 7.07. Then they play Sunday in Saginaw at 5.30. Build three games back-to-back-to-back where they really need to bounce back from last weekend. And you know what? Dana, let you spearhead the start of this. How important is it for the Hounds to get back 
into the winning ways, even though we shouldn't be hitting the panic button by any means. But a little bit of a rough weekend last weekend. Oh, I think it's kind of a good thing they lost a couple games. You know, you go on a 24-game win streak there and, you know, brings them back down to reality a little bit. You know, it, it shows them that they're not invincible going into the playoffs, you know, and they're actually going to have to work to you know, beat some of these teams right now. And, you know, every every team in the OHL is a good team. Obviously, the Greyhounds have been the superior team in the OHL this year. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, for their mind, I think, you know, going into, like, the postseason, I think, you know, they know they, they really have to, you know, play their best hockey if they do want to inevitably win the OHL championship and they'll be fine like they're they're unreal you know what I mean like you don't see too many teams going a streak like they did so I I think it's actually a positive like they'll get back to you know things will get back to usual there and yeah they'll uh, they'll start winning some more hockey games there absolutely and I know the coaching staff definitely wasn't pleased even though well nobody even the players weren't pleased with the performance this weekend but like Dane tested to you know what the games that they lost, you try to move on from it and grow going into this weekend. But your side, Justin, or maybe how the coaching staff could maybe going into the next game, how they can adjust and how they felt after this weekend, you figure? Well, just uh, some of the interviews I read after the game, uh, the coaching staff felt equally that their team you know, didn't play with a lot of energy, didn't play with the same heart they've been playing with over the last little bit. Um, but they equally felt that they... <clears throat> maybe didn't have the right game plan in place and didn't have the players prepared the way they should have been going into those games. But you know, kind of like what Dane said, it's when you go on a you know a 25-game win streak, it's kind of tough to... You, you can't coach certain things. You can't coach players' attitudes when you've had a 25-game win streak. Some of these guys are going to feel invincible. And you, you need a, a bad road trip weekend to kind of bring you back down to earth, realize you're human... And you ju- you have to work. You can't rely on you know a firepower offense every game. Some games you got to work and grind it out. And absolutely, with the Hounds coming back home Friday, very important to get back to the winning ways and where they've been extremely successful on home ice. And you know what? They definitely have the talent to do so. And involving with the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, a lot of people are asking when the possibility of Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds coming on by to Boston Pizza for interviews. The plan is next week. We plan to have some two special guests on next week here at Boston Pizza Thursday. And, you know, we'll be talking about this weekend. Before we go to take a break, fellas, before we come back and talk professional hockey, I want to get both your points. This weekend, between the three games, all games being important going forward, you want to solidify first. You want to solidify going into the playoffs with winning ways. Is there a specific team that could really stick out or maybe you should watch out for? The Hounds have had a lot of trouble with. And I'll start off by saying I know Barry was a team that I think the Hounds should really keep a close eye on. But I think going on the road against Saginaw could be an option too. Is it important to really get back to everything on home ice Friday uh, and conclude this weekend or go in with a clear mindset? Dane? Yeah, I think, you know what, down the stretch, i got to start playing, like, you know, playoff hockey, right? Like, that game we watched against Saginaw, like, you know, it almost looked like they were toying with them a little bit, you know, saucing it through the middle of the ice there. And, like, yeah, and they and it was successful, like, they were doing it, but that's not going to, the style that's going to win you, you know, the OHL championship in the playoffs. And I think, you know, it's got to have the mentality that, you know, they, they are good, but at the same time, teams like Saginaw, you know, they've had a trouble against Sarnia this year. Those teams can beat them, and like, yeah, you know what? Obviously, the Hounds are the favorite to win any game in a seven-game series, but you know what? It is possible for them to lose to a team, and you know they got to stay focused and they got to start playing like that playoff kind of mentality there. Yeah, for sure. I know the game that we saw against Saginaw, squeezing out a win against Saginaw against a hard-working Saginaw team. I know we were kind of uh, touching with on off-air, Justin, that the the middle game, like I mentioned, Barry is definitely the important of the three-game stretch. No, definitely. I think that Barry game this weekend, um, over the next seven days, the Barry game is going to be the big challenge. Um, But three games over the course of the weekend, um, you got Windsor Friday night, and you can't you you can't overlook the Spitfires and you know look too much into Barry. But still, yeah. The, The big thing, of course, like you were saying, is with having the two games. And having Saginaw there, then they, like you said, they have a lot of games coming. We've got three this weekend, Wednesday against Sudbury in the Sioux, Friday, Saginaw again, they play, f- and a lot of games in a row, which can really, it's really like a playoff atmosphere where you're playing every two games, which can get them ready for the playoffs. But it is a lot of games in a row, as you were saying. 
No, definitely. It's uh, we're we're getting into the stretch now where <clears throat> they got to start to put it together. Let's see, let's see what this team is going to look like going into the end of the year and going to the end of the, getting into the playoffs. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. And that's where I'm really looking out for that middle game this weekend. That's a game going to show we're back to back to back nights is important, but that back to back night, that middle game is always good to see where the Hounds can utilize it maybe a different game plan so they can maintain shape and be ready for that game sunday in saginaw a game through through friday that unfortunately we will not be able to attend to but the game they'll be going face to face against barry saturday at 707 so once again they play windsor friday at 707 at the sr center and barry at 707 at the sr center with concluding at a 530 game and saginaw then 707 next week they play sudbury on wednesday and you know what Go Hounds, go. Very excited to see them get back to the winning ways and also loving the talent they have on the ice. So get to the SR Center, buy your tickets, and watch the Hounds live. You're watching a real treat on the ice for sure. We're going to take a quick break here at Boston Pizza. Dave McKay alongside Justin Heichel and Dane Hantrell. When we come back, we're going to be talking professional hockey, and we got lots to talk about. And we're also going to have... The trivia question, so you don't want to miss that for a chance to win a prize here at Boston Pizza. We'll be right back here on The Game Sports Show. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional home to The Game Sports Show, Canadian franchise Boston Pizza. Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, located on 601 Great Northern Road, Sault Ste. Marie. Come in and join Boston Pizza for its numerous specials that are offered. After 9 p.m. daily, come in to Boston Pizza for $9 schooners, $4 rail drinks, and delicious food. Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie, you're among friends. The Mr. Electric Avenue segment would also like to thank its additional sponsors. The Salon, located on 587 Second Line East, to St. Marie, Ontario, owned and operated by Mike Guglietta. The Salon, making the soup beautiful, one haircut at a time. Also, special thanks to the Soup Huey Pro Shop, located in the Soup Huey Arena on 285 Northern Avenue East, to St. Marie, Ontario. Soup Huey Pro Shop, for over 40 years, meeting all your skate sharpie needs, repairs, and hockey needs. Get Wicked at the Wicked Sister. You'll find the best tasting food for the whole family. Start off with some appetizers like the crab dip served with warm non-bread strips and soft pretzel bites or their antibiotic and hormone-free boneless chicken wings with five choices of sauces. Entrees include the barbecue pulled pork sandwich, the number one selling drunken cow burger or Philly cheesesteaks and they're on special all day Thursdays. The Wicked Sister also offers a gluten-free menu and catering. Bring the whole family. The Wicked Sister, downtown Ashman Street, open seven days a week. And welcome back to the Game Sports Show. It's yours truly, Dave McKay, as I've been here all night. And to my left, I got Justin. To my right, I got Dane. And we've had a good show so far, fellas. You know, we had uh, Jamie Henderson come on by. Once again, thank you for Jamie to coming by. We've had some great atmosphere here at boston pizza as always mitch wilson doing a great job as always supervising the place and obviously getting your guys input and i appreciate you guys coming by week by week by week to be usual contributors and you the listeners obviously being a big part of the game sports show and you know what since we like to give our listeners a little bit of bit more reason to listen to the show or to be even bigger fans of the show or be more interactive with the show the website when it gets fully developed we're going to have trivia is on there we're gonna have merchandise on there we're gonna have all the fun stuff but we have introduced this is the second week of the trivia as i've been mentioning throughout the show last week's winner christian gassy winning a free large pizza delivered to his door just hopefully he tips the driver as i've mentioned but we're gonna have our second question right now the second question for the trivia and like i said earlier in the show as well the prize will not be announced until next week but let me promise you it is a great prize and a worth prize for sure worth your time the, tr the trivia question is when was boston pizza in sault st marie open once again when was boston pizza open in sault st marie answer that trivia question right you can send me an email at david jr mckaig at gmail.com or you can reach me on facebook david mckaig jr you can reach me through instagram you can also reach me through the website when that gets popped up. But through the contact page, the best way to reach through me is contact me through my number if you have that or on Facebook at this time. So for now, stick to Facebook, email, or sending me a text message or even calling Boston Pizza to tell us what the answer is when Boston Pizza was open in Sault Ste. Marie. And you'll win a very 
fantastic prize on behalf of Boston Pizza that will be announced next week. And the winner will be announced next week on Thursday here at Boston Pizza. Also, they got some stuff going on here at BP where they're going to have big stuff going on in February with live bands and they get a lot of the Sioux involved and coming into Boston Pizza to have your Saturday night covered. But we also have a Super Bowl gathering for the big game party. We're going to have a big door prize. It's going to be a big TV. We don't got the specifics with the inches yet, but it's going to be a very big TV. It's going to be the door prize for the big game party. And weekly, all day throughout the week, after 9 p.m., there's $4 bar rails, half price starters, and $9 schooners for Canadian and Coors, those delicious Molson products. And, fellas, that's the kind of promotion going on once again. The trivia question, when was Boston Pizza open in Sault Ste. Marie? Get a hold of Boston Pizza or myself to give the answer. The first one will get a great prize on behalf of Boston Pizza. Dane, Justin... Let's jump into the last segment of the sports show tonight, the game sports show. We're going to be talking about a variety of topics here, and we're going to start off with the All-Star game. And, Dane, I'm going to give you the, the start off with this topic. The All-Star game, the skills competition, the game, it seems like they're maybe making an attempt to bring it back to old form with bringing in some exciting new events, trying to get the crowd back into the skills competition, which has been more so always for the fans, but was definitely a lot more intense Back in the late 90s, early 1000s, it's kind of drifted away from that one more towards the fun. They're getting more of these competitions that are going to make the players work, going to make them be more involved and have to showcase their skills, which skills competition, it makes sense to do so. Dane, get your insight on the All-Star Game weekend that's coming up this weekend. Yeah, another All-Star game. Uh, we're having it again this year uh, due to the fact that the NHLers are not going over to uh, South Korea for the Olympics. Um, most of the same thing going on. Uh, there is two new events going on. There is the uh, the passing challenge where uh, is focusing on the targets where each player must uh, complete four passes. Uh, two targets that uh, light up in a random sequence is what uh, Sports Center's uh, summarization for it is and then there's uh the shootout challenge which is pretty much the same shootout challenge but the uh the way it's scored this time is uh based on how many saves a goalie can make on a row in a row i mean uh so every team all the te all the players on each team get to shoot uh so nine players whether you have the most saves or the least amount of saves if you get three saves in a row and you let six goals in you can still potentially win whether the other team, you know, stops, you know, seven but only makes, you know, two saves in a row kind of thing. So, yeah, something different, you know. Got to try to keep it exciting. I don't know. I've never been an overly big fan of the All-Star game. It is what it is. I, I, I did like the three-on-three -three concept. I think it makes it a little bit more exciting, a little bit more flow to the game. You get to see a little bit more of the, uh, the, the talent that these players are, you know, bring to the game. Rather than when you watch, you know, the five-on-five -five back in the day, it was uh, re real hard to watch. It was almost like watching men's hockey. To a point, but uh, yeah, that's about it. So two new, two new uh, skill comps in the uh, in the skills comp there, and uh, yeah, and then the three on three the uh, the day after that. So uh, just another All Star game. See what the All Star game. PK Subban today said who he thinks his MVP is going to be, and it was Nathan McKinnon. What do you think, Justin? I uh, I don't know about that one. I mean. McKinnon's hot right now, but that doesn't usually transition into all-star game success. We all know who got MVP one time, John Scott, winning the MVP. But, Justin, what I want to ask you about the all-star game in particular, as I said when I opened up with the all-star topic about getting it back to its old form, getting that excitement back for the fans. And, you know, having the all-star game what it is, maybe make it mean more of something and we've talked about it last year on the game sports show and we're going to talk about here because the first time we'll talk about at boston pizza would it make sense to make the all-star game mean something in terms of like the mlb does it maybe make it if a team wins that specific i know it's a division 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 for three on three but maybe make it mean something more towards the entire team getting more incentive Maybe getting that extra bonus from the NHL, or maybe if that division wins, if they play in the Western Conference, the Western Conference gets home ice advantage in the Stanley Cup Finals. Maybe something like that. To, it would People think it might be scared in terms of body contact, but you make it contact free to avoid the injuries. You can still have intense games. I, hey, you can still have intense games 
in terms of not having body checking. As lame as that may sound, it would really open up the ice more and maybe increase goal scoring and the seriousness. I'm not saying for it, but should the All-Star game mean something or adding these events, is that good enough and keeping it three-on-three? Three? Well, I think if they're going to take the Olympics away from the players and impose the All-Star game on them, they should at least make it worth something so the players are enticed to go. Uh, I mean... Because a lot of players, I feel, still go based on just fan interaction and, you know, the fun of the weekend. And then there's a certain caliber of players like the Crosbys and the Ovechkins that basically just have to show up. Um, but I, I, I really do think we're at the point now where you're telling the players they can't go to the Olympics. You're telling the players they got to show up for the All-Star game. You're telling the players they got to play in your manufactured World Cup of Hockey. Then if you're telling them they got to do this, then at least make it worth their while. That's... You know what, Dana, I get you to jump in on this too. Making it mean something. I may have said a pretty, as you can say, lame comment in terms of no body contact, but that's the big reason why players aren't in the Olympics. Sure, there's the agreements, but people, GMs are afraid of players getting hurt. Look at John Tavares with Team Canada. Gar Snow was not a happy camper because the Islanders are right near a playoff spot at that particular time. And imagine if the Leafs lost Austin Matthews. Or if the Pens lost Crosby, or even Oilers losing McDavid, that's a not that it fully matters at this point. As we like to joke around with the Oilers, but there's hey, so a lot of games left. Let's make the All Star game maybe mean something. Or do you think these skills competitions is fine enough for keeping it three on three and just keeping it as is? Yeah, like uh, I think at the end of the day, it's the same thing with the Olympics right now. It, it's the risk factor, right? The owners are the ones that are going to vote on, you know, making that, you know, if they want the all-star game to mean something. I feel like the reason the MLB can do it is because the risk isn't, you know, they play 162 games a season. It's just another baseball game, right? Hockey's different. It's a contact sport. There's more likely to be an injury. Um and, and, and like you know, you're gonna have it, it's kind of weird because same thing with the MLB. Like half these guys aren't even you know in the in the playoff race. Like their team's not going anywhere. But there's more teams in the NHL or more players that are gonna be in the All Star game that are gonna have a chance. You know that maybe if they do make the Cup final, they will be you know have home ice advantage kind of thing. It's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. I think the I think the NHL All Star game is kind of is what it is kind of like I don't. I don't know how much more you can really improve it on on top of what it already is. I liked when they introduced the three on three concept to it. I thought that made it a whole lot more exciting. I think the fans voting, you know, having the fan interaction, you know, that that's better for hockey. I feel like they they have a little bit more say and that brings more people to the game. You know, say if I voted for this guy and they're playing, maybe I'm gonna watch it kind of thing. But yeah, I, I don't think you can ever make the, the NHL All Star game mean like you know that like the western conference is gonna host you know or be the the home ice guys for the uh for the nhl finals kind of thing it's just there's there's too much risk involved and it's and it goes back to the olympics that's the exact reason that the nhl players aren't going to the to korea right now is because the owners are worried about their star players getting hurt and you look at Tavares, what happened to him in the last olympics he was out for the rest of the season after the Olympics. So, you know, it goes a long way when your star player is out. And you know what? The All-Star game is one game. You still have the rest of the season to play. And it is a contact sport. It's always a danger, I was told as a coach, when it comes to games like this. It's a danger when you step on the ice. You can slip your, pull your groin just by stepping on the ice. It is a thing where you hop over the boards, your skates aren't tight enough, and you roll your ankle. There's little things. You're professionals, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day... Always a risk when it comes to hockey. I like, I'll give my opinion in terms of I feel that maybe they should keep it as is and make it mean something towards the end of, maybe not a whole mice advantage thing, but maybe incorporate something that allows the, the gate players to take it a little bit more serious without the additional risk involved. More incentive for the entire team. Uh, maybe if, uh, if, you, if that team wins, they're able to give tickets to family to go to games or bring the family into games on road trips i'm 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 not sure stuff like that i know that's hard to incorporate but at the end of the day a little bit of something to get that little edge of seriousness but i like what you said about the risk factor of injury i do appreciate that but maybe what i said is a little bit off the charts but i'm sure there's something that this the, the owner or something can think of to add a bit more excitement i think their goal this year was just to add events at the end of the day to make it more exciting but if they can do something towards the game that's three on three already, which I think is so exciting as a big fan of three on three hockey, as you all know, especially in Sault Ste. Marie, I think doing something might be a possibility. I know, Dan, you have a final thought. 
Yeah, uh, if you remember back in the day, they had the Young Guns game. Um, you know, those are rookies or, you know, guys that are, you know, first, second, third year in, into their career kind of thing. And I think that was like you know, maybe a game to showcase their skills and more more of something to prove. You got It's an all-star game. All these guys have proven they have the big contracts for the most part. You know, you might get that one guy that, you know, is having a career year out of nowhere and he might try to light up the all-star game. But, you know, like Sidney Crosby... He, he's rested after having a couple injuries a couple years. Like, Sidney Crosby is only, like, a two-time All-Star. He's only actually been to the All-Star game twice. I think this year will be his third year. But I, I just feel like it, it is where it is, and I think the NHL's done a go- good job with the three-on-three. But I just I, I don't feel like there's too much more you can really do to make it a, a more visually appealing kind of presentation. Like, it's just it is what it is, right? And everybody you know I, i'm an nhl guy but do i really like care about the all-star game that much no i'm waiting for the playoffs to start rocking whether my oilers are in it or not which they're usually not in it but do i still watch the playoffs yeah Connor mcdavid's going to the all-star game this weekend yeah i might tune in for a little bit but you know what i don't really care about it that much so i guess we can fair to say it's something that you're not fully excited for but you know what? Definitely something we're definitely going to tune in. It's like with the Olympics. People say they're upset that the pros aren't there, but we all know you're going to tune in to watch. Moving on from the All-Star game, fellas, moving along here. On this final segment, we get a more time without commercial breaks, and we get a more topics in for talking about a lot of things professional. There's always a lot of topics. And the next thing I want to bring up is a congratulatory slash discussion topic with Matthew Barzell of the New York Islanders. Number 13 on the New York Islanders. You know, when he played for the World Juniors and when he played junior hockey, I wouldn't predict that he would have broken the record that he did. And he joined some elite company in breaking this record. He's the fourth rookie to get 50 points in 50 games. Joining some damn elite company. Wayne Gretzky, Sidney Crosby, and Alexander Ovechkin. That is uh, <laughs> some pretty superior a company, I must say. And with that, Barzell, I've said it before on the show, I really see a lot of Mark Savard in him when it came to playmaking. When it comes to scoring goals, I think it's more of maybe the hands and ability of Pavel Datsuk. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's like a mix of both. And ironically, Datsuk wears number 13. But... Getting back to the point, breaking the record. Congratulations to Matthew Barzell. Doing well for the New York Islanders. A little bright spot on an area that has John Tavares as a free agent this year that we're going to get to later on in the show, on this segment. Dane, this was something that you brought to my attention. I want you to start off by saying, how exciting is this for a piece of history for himself and for us to witness? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's really going to kind of change what the Islanders do this offseason with Bailey and Tavares being free agents. Like, they're not signing both those guys, you know. They just took on a $6 million contract with Jordan Eberle. And, you know, Tavares is going to command big money. You know, Bailey, I think it's just has, I think he's two points under his all-time high for points in the season, which was last year with 50-some points. And he's obviously going to surpass that by, you know, 20, 30 points this year. So, yeah, he's going to demand a lot of money through free agency. And I think one thing you got to look at, especially with, like, Tavares, like, he was a guy that suffered by the lockout with the new collective bargaining agreement when he had to sign his new contract after his entry league contract. The guy's making $5.5 million this year, which is ridiculous for John Tavares. I don't know if he's the kind of guy that's just going to, you know, sign with a team based on money. But, uh, yeah, he's going to be looking for a big upgrade financially. And, like, yeah, well-deserved. He's been one of the best players in the NHL for the past, you know, five, six years. And uh, But, yeah, no, Matt Barzell, like, I think that, you know, might be able to let the Islanders maybe we're probably not going to give Josh Bailey a eight-year, eight-year, $8 million contract kind of thing. Um I think they wanted to obviously sign Tavares back, but I think that just, you know, having uh, having Barzell there is going to definitely leave them with a lot more options on how he's doing. And, yeah, he has two more years before you're going to have to give him his big payday. So, but, yeah, awesome for him. That is, you know, a great accomplishment, especially with, you know, the people that he's done it with, like, you know, with Gretzky and uh, Crosby and Ovechkin. Like, those are some of the best players that ever played the game. So, yeah, no, that's good for him. For sure, Justin. Very exciting player to watch, Matt Barzell is. You know, we in the Canada region, especially geared in the Toronto realm the most, but 
We've seen the highlights. He's put up some highlights this year with playmaking, with goals. And he's maybe even alleviated pressure off of John Tavares a little bit for carrying a load fully on his shoulders. Maybe it's just on one shoulder now opposed to both shoulders. And the other shoulders compelled with Barzell and Eberle, perhaps. But at the end of the day, what an exciting young talent to watch. And it looks for for all these young guys. We see a lot of young guys in the blue and white. But throughout the league, there's a lot of young guys coming up, and he is something special to watch. Well, and, and the team's done a good job with surrounding him with, you know, like talent. Like other guys that have been, you know, are, are superstars or have been superstars at various levels in their career. Everly in particular. Everly. Tavares. You know, he's, he's got guys that have been around, have been pros, you know, have, have been – have been successful at his age and haven't let it get to their heads. So I think the team's done a good job in that aspect and th- th- allowing you know him to develop to this point. And if they keep on that track, I mean, he's at 50 points in 50 games right now. Who's what's to say next year what he does? And it makes it a lot easier for the Islanders to you know let Josh Bailey go. That's exactly what Dave said, and with uh, I agree, we couldn't agree more with that. With Barzell. I can't see a player like this being a sophomore slump type of guy. He's just like one of this part of the next generational talent we're going to see in the National Hockey League. Again, 50 points, 50 games. Joining some elite company, as I said, with Crosby, Ovechkin, and Wayne Gretzky. Wow. Uh, just so everybody knows, I didn't mention a name that everyone probably forgets about. Connor McDavid is not in that realm. Now, fair enough to say in his rookie year, he had a little bit of an injury his rookie year. Probably would have gotten to that point, but he's not in that company. Matt Barzell is. Moving on, free agency. We talked about a little bit with Tavares and Bailey, and we'll say that right off the hop here. Tavares and Bailey being free agents. JVR being free agents this year. James Neal, Chara, John Carlson, Evander Kane, Ilya Kovalchuk, Joe Thornton, Cam Atkinson, Marcia So from, Ve- from Vegas. You got the Sedin twins. You got Paul Stassi. You got, uh, you got Mike Green. You got Tyler Bozak. You got a loaded free agency class this year. And we're going to take time here, myself, Dane, and Justin here live at Boston Pizza, talking about free agencies coming up this year. I know when it comes to offseason for the hockey, we're going to get really deep into up to the draft and the free agents and how the offseason goes. But I like how we're going to talk about it right now coming up because it's really going to affect the deadline. A lot of players are going to be rentals, own rentals, especially if you talk about James Neal and JVR, potentially JVR if he doesn't stay in Toronto. Fellas, we're going to talk about guys that really stick out to us. I'm going to go last when it comes to this. I'm going to give Justin the first go on a couple guys you want to discuss. And where do you think they're going? Are they staying? Is it big for these guys to stay where they are? If you look at JVR and Bolzak in Toronto, own rentals. Carlson in Washington. Evander Kane in Buffalo. We know we don't need him as an own rental because Buffalo is a little bit south in the standings. So you know that's a good player to move at the deadline opposed to losing him for nothing. Out of this list... And other possible players that you have in mind, what really stands out to you going into the off season, which does connect to the deadline? I mean, I think JVR stays put at least until the summer. If at any point in the next couple months Toronto's losing a winger anytime soon, it's probably going to be Matt Martin. I really think that his time now in Toronto is kind of done. That's there's there's better players itching to get in the lineup and i don't think you just get rid of a jvr on the whim, on a whim to acquire someone when you have a matt martin hanging around and you could have bumped casper capitan up replaced martin kept jvr where it was and had a pretty solid four lines i don't i don't see the need to sell off jvr right now to at this everyone's looking to grab a defenseman well in the next couple days, we're getting Morgan Riley and Zaitsev back, and we didn't have to pay anything for that. So, like, let's let's see what February has to offer before we start clearing out the cupboards right now. Um, as far as other players go, I mean, the Sedins in Vancouver are an interesting one to me. I they've expressed interest in coming back, but not a Van- not a playoff bound team right now. It doesn't seem like they're going to be. It looks like Vancouver's starting to push forward the youth movement out there, and the Sedins are going to be kicking rocks soon on their way out of Vancouver. That's whether the team can get something for them now or 
eventually they just they, they leave via free agency. Like, I'm not sure what the date is on their contract, but I mean, it, it's probably in both parties' best interest to go their separate ways now. I see this almost being like with the Sedins, with the Matt Sundin situation, where they want to remain loyal until they can't stay there any longer. And what I mean by can't is when the team's not interested in signing you anymore. I know Linden and company is excited to sign them, but why? I know you want veterans there that can help the leader, the young kids grow, but these are veterans that have been to the cup finals, haven't won a cup, that want to go for a cup. Uh, now, there's a lot of teams out there that are higher up in the rankings they don't have a lot of cap room either to afford the cities that are going to demand a pretty penny. So maybe that's why they want to stay in Vancouver. But at the end of the day, it doesn't seem to make sense to me. So that's a good topic. Uh, do you have another player that you want to add and bring to the table in terms of that you kind of want to bring? I mean, it's a share of the wealth here with everybody. I like that. Dane, I'll jump over to you. I know you got a couple guys. I'll finish it off after you. Uh, you're going to talk about some guys. Where are they going? What are they doing? What do you think? I'll, I'll touch on the Sedins a little bit. Like, I think there's a lot of interesting storylines that are going to be going to the free agency this year. The Sedins being one of them. I think, you know, Vancouver is kind of in, in, in the mode where, you know, they should probably try to look more towards the future. You know, you got guys like Jake Bertanen is never going to be able to develop as a player until maybe you free up some ice time on like a third or second line kind of unit. Have the Sedins really been that valuable to Vancouver? Not that they've had that much success. Yeah, but, you know, they're getting old, and I do think there's still a market for those two. And, like, obviously, you know, they played their whole career together. I don't see them at, you know, late 30s, you know, splitting up and going to two separate teams kind of thing. Um, that being said, it'll be interesting what happens. Uh, my opinion is I don't think Vancouver should resign them. I think they should open up cap space for other guys and uh, let their younger guys get up in the lineup and start developing. Uh, Tavares and Josh Bailey are two really big guys that are uh, up for free agency. Um, obviously, the Islanders can't sign both of them. Um, I think it's all going to be dependent on what Tavares does. If Tavares doesn't want to come back to the Islanders, do the Islanders pay Josh Bailey a boatload of money to stay relevant? I could see that happening. Uh, Zidane Chara, the guy's 40 years old. He's kind of had a little bit of a bounce back year this year. Um, I can see him signing another one-year deal with Boston. Uh, Boston looks like they're uh, they're a pretty good hockey team this year. I think, you know, probably in the top three best teams in the Eastern Conference right now. Um, got John Carlson, I think, is going to be, you know, other than Tavares, the most highly touted free agent out there. Um, I don't... Washington can't re-sign him. The guy's making three point some million dollars right now. You just got shot in Kirk there. There's no way that they're going to re-sign him. He's going to go somewhere else. Um, or they don't have Shad and Kirk anymore. But still, they got so much heavy contracts. They got Kinnett's off that they got to re-sign and guys like that. So I think John Carlson's probably going to you know go to the open market and look for the money. Evander Kane, well, we all know what he's in for. He wants to get a big paycheck. He doesn't care where he plays. Kovalchuk, who knows, he might come back to the NHL. He's still letting it up in, in Russia, apparently. Uh, Joe Thornton's another guy. I think he probably just goes back to San Jose or retires. Still a productive player. Maybe he goes to, like, a big contender. Uh, Cam Atkinson, I think he's a very interesting player. Uh, you look at Columbus, they have, like, they're so deep, like, just, like, through their first three lines. Like, they're very, yeah, they're a really good team. Um how much money do you pay Cam Atkinson? You know, he didn't come into the team being like, you know, one of their high big prospects or anything like that. So he's kind of an interesting guy. Um, I think he might be a guy that gets overpaid just for a team that has the uh, the cap space. Uh, Paul Stastny, he's a guy that's, you know, getting a little bit older. He's kind of like Bozak. I think he'd be kind of in the same uh, same as Bozak there and uh, and Green out of Detroit there. Um, but yeah, I know it's a it's a very deep uh, free agency pool. It should be exciting. I think uh, the teams that uh, that have cap space, I maybe think that they're you know in the position to you know take that next step and to you know maybe be a playoff team that aren't this year. I could see like you know maybe a team, even like Florida. I know Florida is still deep down the middle, but they did lose Marsa so. And I think he's going to go back to uh, to Las Vegas. But uh, guys like that are still young, um, that are centermen. I think, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of teams that overpay for guys in free agency this year. And uh, 
And I, I'll speak about JVR too. I think the only way the Leafs move him at the deadline is if they can improve on defense. I don't see any other reason why you would move him. I think they're still in a playoff spot. If you want to contend in the uh, the postseason this year, you got to keep him. But if you can get like a top three, top four defenseman for JVR and maybe a draft pick or something like that, then you deal him. But you got to think that guy brings so much to the Leafs organization right now. Like, you know, he's a veteran player. He's been there for so long. You know, you take that guy out, you know, I think they, they, they kind of, I, I just don't see how they can move him and improve their team. So I, I think JVR stays. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's going to be a really interesting uh, trade deadline and uh, free agency this year. So I'm excited to watch it. For sure, a lot of good stuff there, fellas. And I'm just going to say off the hop, and you touched with a lot there, Dane. Two, there's a few names. Two names that really stick out to me, though. Ilya Kovalchuk. New Jersey still owns his rights. Until this year. Free agents. and Where would he go? Who would pay that penny for him to go somewhere? You know when he comes back, he wants to go to a contender. He wants to win a Stanley Cup. And when I think contenders right now, I'm thinking of a lot of teams at the top of my head that can't afford to pay what he wants. Unless he wants a discount. I'm interested to see where he goes this year. I really call this a Kovalchuk watch summer for me because where does he fit in? Where does he go? Maybe it's back in New Jersey now. For real. Maybe it is back in New Jersey because they're not a bad hockey team right now. I didn't predict New Jersey to be where they are. Maybe there's a fit for him on the Islanders. Tavares returns. Barzell is Eberle. Why not throw Kovalchuk on the other side? The Islanders are not a, they're not a cap hit team a lot. Florida. There's another team for Kovalchuk that has money, a lot of young guys, a better team than what's being shown. Why not throw money? The Leafs can't afford Kovalchuk. Dallas Stars can't afford Kovalchuk. The Pittsburgh Penguins can't afford Kovalchuk. The Washington Capitals can't afford Kovalchuk. Las Vegas will not be able to afford Kovalchuk after a lot of guys like James Neal and all that that they want to re-sign, maybe re-sign. Not saying Neal's resigning there, but they're not going to be able to afford all that. Chicago Blackhawks, they can't afford Kovalchuk. Teams like that that are this year that are more bottom that should be contenders are teams that Kovalchuk is going to maybe be realistically to go after. Joe Thornton, you said it. Contender, centerman. If Bolzak leaves Toronto, I think it makes sense. I really think it still makes sense. There's always been the rumors out there, Big Joe maybe coming to Toronto. There. The, that, oh, needs, that, that needs to happen because I don't think Bolzak's coming back unless he's taking the same contract. JVR is making 4.25. That's a guy I want to touch with too. I think you can sign him for five and a half. I think you can get him for five and a half, maybe maybe six. And when you move Martin and you move certain guys, I think you could make it work, maybe. But it's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. You're only getting JVR back for that price if he wants to come back. Yeah, if, no. If he wants to be a Leaf for the next couple of years, then yeah, he's going to take a discount. You go to look. You're going to sign Marner, Nylander, and Matthews. Tough cap space, man. Tough cap for sure. And another name that's really sticking out to me that I want to touch on. Is Marsh so? Vegas. They want him back. Are you going to throw $5 million at Jonathan Marsh so? Do you think he's earned five? I'm not saying, wait, give me a second. Is he, uh, he's having a good year, but is he $5 million still worthy? Or is he the type of guy maybe you give four to right now? Easy $5 million, And I'll tell you why. It's Vegas. They have so much cap room right now. They're going to lose Neal's contract. get tighter there. Is James, don't Neal, think, no. James Neal might even come back. On the, depending on the success of this team this year, I think that is like such like a brotherhood kind of team right now. They're a point behind Tampa Bay for first in the NHL, and we're 50-some games through the season right now. They're not a joke. Like, they're the real deal right now, and why not? Like, they have so much cop space, and, like, $5 million? I think that's nothing for a guy like that that's averaging more than a point per game right now. You know, my Oilers... Dreisaitl, Peter Shirelli, not not a big fan of the guy, gave you know Leon Dreisaitl $8.5 million, and he played with McDavid all year. This guy's been doing it on his own with guys like David Perron. And like, not that James Neal's a bad player, but David Perron is averaging a point point per game right now, playing on his line right now. And Perron was like, you know, disappeared the past couple years. So like, I think that speaks a lot to how he's done, like Marceau's done this season and I think you know what why would you want to go back you're having a career year with Vegas right now I think life is good in Vegas I feel it feels comfortable with the organization get like don't sign him to a long long term deal but like you know what six million dollars for four years I'd do it steep that's steep I still think that's steep. Cap, not with the cap going up not with the cap going up not steep in the NHL anymore if Ryan Nugent Hopkins is a six and a half million dollar hockey player then Jonathan Marcheseau is easily a seven Easily. 
Like I don't, I don't see how he's not a seven million dollar cap hit. How's he not in the All Star game either? Because the All Star game is a mess. Phil Kessel's not in the All Star game. Good point. Phil Kessel should be in like the NHL top one hundred, and I don't think he was in there either. So, very good points, fellas. Very good points. And the last point I want to say with this topic is bold prediction, and you're gonna laugh because I think it's a sarcastic bold prediction. Tyler Bolzak going to Pittsburgh. That's my bold prediction. And moving on from the free agency side of things, trade deadline talk. We're going to make this quick, fellas, before we get to our quick, brief leaf chat. And then our trivia, we got about eight minutes to play with here. Like I said, we got the 25 to 40 minute range when it comes to this last part of the show. Who's your buyer? Who's your seller? Justin. Ooh, that's a tricky one. I mean, I think, I really think this year is probably the year the Chicago Blackhawks try and unload some things, the deadline. Try and recoup, you know, some valuable assets, draft picks, young players for some of the older guys they have coming up on, you know, expiring contracts this year or next year. Um, I don't necessarily know that Chicago maybe has to look into a rebuild anytime soon, but they definitely need to start retooling and they got to restock that cupboard. Um, so I'd say Chicago is probably my seller. Uh, as far as a buyer goes, that's a tricky one. I, I may, maybe Vegas, but like I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of like the same. It's the same way I felt about the Greyhounds. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. Uh, Just made brief adjustments. Yeah. So, Big splash, don't get me wrong, with the trade, but it was a brief adjustment with the Hounds. So, I, don't, I, I think Vegas should stay the course. It, it's tough to say right now because a lot of teams are doing really well with where they're at. And there's not a lot of teams in that mid-ground. There's a lot of teams doing really good, and then there's a lot of teams doing bad. Not really bad, just bad. Like that's, There's good or bad. There's not a, you're almost there right now. I like that. And, Dane, I'm going to let you go last on this one. I'm going to go second here in terms of sellers in the National Hockey League. And I think a seller, in my opinion, and I think you're going to not be surprised by this one, but definitely the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, that's the team I'm going with. I was leaning towards Montreal and Ottawa, but I know Ottawa is an obvious point. I didn't want to get into Ottawa. I want to say an interesting one in being in Montreal because I know Mark Bergevin is being active right now. He is so active, apparently, it's unreal. And he's not going to unload all the veterans or anything like that because they don't got too many veterans. You're not going to move Shea Weber. You got Tomas Pekanich there that you're going to consider moving. You got to have Alex called Chenyuk, I think. You're going to have, you know, potentially maybe people listen to Brandon Gallagher, who's getting paid five north of $5 million, too. So Bergevin is actively looking. Actively looking. A little notable there, like I said, the Ottawa Senators. But in terms of a buyer, I think a very strong buyer this year is going to be the Columbus Blue Jackets. Something just tells me with Columbus, they have the pieces there, they have the goaltending, but Johnson requested a trade out of Columbus. That's not going to be an easy trade to do by the deadline. It might be more of a summer thing, but I feel that Columbus, with Atkinson's expiring contract, maybe bring in a talent that maybe leans more towards Evander Kane. I, I don't know. I know Kane is really looking towards the Vancouver thing, but they're rebuilding. Maybe the Boston Bruins are buyers, but we got to choose one and one here. And like I said, I'm going to go with the Canadians and Columbus Blue Jackets being very active buyers. And notable for buyer as well has to be the Toronto Maple Leafs for me as well, too. We're going to get to that shortly. Dane, quickly to you. Buyers, seller. Um, yeah, I think the Bruins are definitely up there. I think the Bruins have the prospects to you know, make the deal. Um, the Penguins are out of a playoff spot right now, and the Penguins... Uh, they, they, they aren't a team that just doesn't make the playoffs, and they always seem like they make a big move at the, at the deadline there. So I think they're definitely going to be buyers. Um, yeah, you're going to look at some Canadian teams that are in the bottom of the standings. I think Vancouver is definitely a team that should be a seller. Um, I think they got a great prospect pool right now. I think they should, you know, dump, if they can dump off the Sedins at the, at the deadline. But taking two guys, like you have to almost take two guys, like, that's hard. I don't know how many teams have, you know, the ability to do that. And uh, and, and everything's going to be depicted on the first team that makes that big deal. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the, the, the Sabres are asking for a ridiculous fee for Evander Kane. And if they even get anything near that, well, maybe we're not going to see as many trades. But 
see Evander Kane go for maybe like, you know, a first round pick and only a first round pick, then yeah, then the market's open. People are willing to, you know, trade guys and not expecting that much back. But uh, yeah, the Hobbs, the Sens, I, the, I'm very surprised on how bad. I, I know they would love to get rid of Dion Phaneuf, but who, who has the cap space and, and who wants Dion Phaneuf for, you know, with the, the ability that he still has left? Um, but yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, I think Vancouver and Montreal and uh, Ottawa, they should be selling. Um, even my Oilers, I, I think Pat Maroon's are for sure going to be out of there. Sell them while his market's high. Um, Chirelli's handicapped the Oilers with, you know, all these no trade movements with Sakara and Clefbaum and Larson. So I don't know how much activity they're going to have. But yeah, no, I really look to the Canadian teams. I think uh, Toronto, Toronto usually stays pretty status quo with the lineup they have. I think it's too soon for them to really make a push for, you know, a Stanley Cup run. Um, I think JVR, yeah, is one guy in Bozak, maybe one or the other they might try to trade. But I, I don't see them being in a position where they're going to trade the guy for prospects or draft picks i think the only way you trade those guys is if it's going to improve your team at the end of the at the end of the deadline so if i'm looking at toronto i'm trading draft picks what do you what do you need more prospects for you guys got three guys that you're gonna have to give a bunch load of millions of dollars to the next season or the year after that and that's gonna really you know handy like handcuff you cap wise kind of thing so uh but yeah, no, there's so many teams that are kind of hovering around, like, right, you know, in the playoff spot right now. So it should be interesting. I think, you know, the lead up to the trade deadline is going to be a really telling tale of what teams do what. And it always happens that way. Like, the tea, it's always the day before, a couple of days before. And I think after the uh, All-Star game, we're going to really start seeing a lot of moves in the NHL right now. Good points, fellas, and definitely an exciting deadline. And quickly with the Leafs chat. They're going to jump on in. The Leafs with a big win in Chicago in overtime with a penalty shot from William Nylander. The excitement for the penalty shot is not as much as everyone thinks anymore due to the shootout. But the Leafs getting back to the winning ways even after tonight with a big win in Dallas. Matthews with three goals and one assist in the last four games. 4-1 Four win in Dallas with Curtis McElhaney in Nets. God, that guy is a little like a goat in there. The guy just gets the job done. You know, with uh, the Leafs getting back to the winning ways going into All-Star weekend. Now they don't play till Wednesday. Morgan Riley, Zaitsev, hopefully healthy after the All-Star game. Going to come back. Big additions. We still need defense. Justin, I'm going to yell that. I've said it for how many months now on the show. And that's where I'm sitting when it comes to the deadline. Defense. Defense. I want one guy. And I've already said who the guy is. Gabranson. Eric Johnson, no, I, I'm more of a Gabranson guy. I feel like it just makes sense, especially if you have Jake Gardner back there. And the Leafs getting back to the winning ways, Justin. Good to see that. And Nazem Kadri finding the back of the net is not that's not say, scary anymore. It's a little bit of a relief seeing him score two games in a row. It's nice seeing the lines shaking up a little bit. Finally trying a few different things. Um, doesn't have to be the same set and stone lines we had week one, day one of the season. You know, we can try different things. That's nice to see. Um, but it, it seems like with, uh, you know, Marlowe and Marner, and it, it seems to have kind of reignited the scoring a little bit. So that was definitely nice to see this week. It was refreshing to watch him play this week, especially how worried I was with how hurt we are on the back end right now. I was not having Zaitsev or Riley back there right now. Um, I was definitely a little nervous going into this week, but for sure the big thing is you know what having the lines really gel that's good. And Matthews got a nice little streak going into the All Star break, for sure good for Leafs fans. Fellas, we're getting close on crunching time here, uh, so we're going to move along quickly here to make this a quick edition of the Multiple Choice segment. We got Dave McCaig here alongside Dane Hanshaw, Justin Heichel, live at Boston Pizza, Sault Ste. Marie. Fellas, we have questions to ask in terms of, let's say, four questions for multiple choice. I just want an answer and a three-second reasoning for it as, you know, crunch for time, but some brief because a multiple choice usually only can circle the answer. So the four questions that we're going to have for multiple choice, there is no prize given here for any of us, so we're just going to give our own opinions. And the first question, and we're going to start with this famous multiple choice portion of the show brad marchand or another repeat offender for the sixth time in his career getting suspended for a total of five games he got suspended for but he gets to play in the all-star game 
which does make sense in a way sort of for me. But is this enough? Is this five-game suspension enough for a repeat offender? Justin, I'll go to you first. I don't think it is. I mean, the company he's in now at the – I was watching – forget what I saw it on today, but he's top five in the league now for lost time, lost games, lost wages. Like, he's lost almost a million dollars just because he can't keep his nose clean out there. And that's – I mean, it doesn't matter that he's, you know, a perennial all-star the last couple years. If he's going around and acting like an idiot, then you have to make an example of him. You don't have a problem making an example of goons, but then when you have one of your all-stars acting like an idiot, you say, no, no, it's okay that you show up for the all-star game, but be suspended. You know, that's, I, I kind of have an issue there. That's, you know, some players are, get the book thrown at them, and other players, not so much. Good answer. Dean? I think if any all-star you're going to make an example of and actually, you know, try to actually stay consistent with your suspensions, you know, it's so easy to suspend a, a, a goon on the ice for 20 games for doing the same thing. But, you know, Brad Marchand, been one of the top players in the NHL the past couple of years, you know, points per game-wise. I think it's not enough games. It's a six suspension, should be more. And, yeah, he never seems to learn. So, yeah, definitely more. Clean sweep off the board. Definitely not enough games. Should be more. I'm going to leave it at that. Fellas, I'm going to go to the next question. That question being the Maple Leafs. Rate the Leafs' expectations this year. Too high? Expected? Or too low? I'm going to start. And I'm going to go with expected. I'm going to go with expected because I know they... I think if they said too high, it would be Stanley Cup. If they said too low, it'd be sophomore slump. I think expected. I didn't see them being. It was either a first. It was definitely a playoff finish. I'm not pleased with them being in third in the division, but they're still in the playoff spot and a lot of time left. Were they a top team in the division? I knew Tampa was going to be good, and I actually thought Ottawa was going to be strong this year. So that one of those two was incorrect. So I think it is definitely expected. I think they're staying on course with what's as expected. But that's my thought. Dane? Yours? Yeah, I think they're pretty much where I, I assume that they would be in. I think if they're really, uh, like, the division, how bad it is this year, maybe you would think they'd be a little bit higher. But, no, like, at the end of the day, like, I would think, you know, they're going to be around the third, second kind of seed in the uh, in the vision there. So, yeah, they're right where I thought they would be. Dane, or Dane. I apologize, Dane. You already gave your answer. Justin. No, I think they're exactly where they should be. That's Another clean, clean sweep. We've never sweep. Well, I, it's, you'd be kind of ridiculous to expect them to win the Stanley Cup, but you'd be also, you know, kind of dumb to think that they're going to take so many steps back that they wouldn't be in the playoffs. But that's that's also not impossible. That I mean, we've we've seen that happen. So for sure, we know one team that we thought was expected to make the playoffs is not in it. I know the team is named the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, expectations for sure. Third question, fellas. Two more questions to go before we wrap up the show, and we're getting pulled for a time here. We're getting poked on the shoulder here. For, so, next question. The goal against Jonathan Bernier was disallowed from Austin Matthews. He, he kissed the blocker of John Bernier. Let's say that. May, may I say that? That's professional. I think that's professional enough to say. However, Anderson, well, apparently... The Chicago Air team, uh, Namisimov, got pushed on Anderson. I didn't see a full push. I, he falls on Anderson, and they score, and they count it. This allowed against Bernier for barely touching. The consistency being an issue with a lot of players and fans. But I'm not going to go there with the refs. That's a whole other topic, and it's something that we can't, as uh, sports analysts, get into. So I'm going to ask this question because I'm allowed to ask this. Should that goal have allowed against Bernier, or shouldn't have been disallowed? And the same thing goes for that Chicago goal, allowed or disallowed. Uh, it's really tough on this one. It's it's annoyingly tough. It's the Bernier one to me should have been a goal, um, the, but the one against Anderson should have been a no goal. Now, me being a Leafs fan, I'm going to get crucified in the court of public opinion because I'm a Leafs fan, and so every goal for Toronto should be for Toronto, and every goal against Toronto should you know not count. But like, come on. Like the guy's laying on top of Anderson, and it's a goal, and 
Matthews maybe had too much wind to go by Bernier and that, you know, threw him off balance. But to me, it, it, over the, the NHL as a sample size, it seems like the refs are helping out goalies that can't necessarily play up to par, whereas other goalies, you know, the upper echelon of goalies that are expected to, you know, be on their game all night are held to a higher standard of what's goalie interference and what's not versus goalies that, you know, backups or, you know, in and out of the AHL guys. You know, they're, they get held to a lower standard of what could be. That's, that's just what it seems like to me. I'm going to say quickly, disallowed, or I'm going to go actually with this. Disallowed against Bernier, disallowed against Anderson. No reason. If you're going to count any interference on a goalie, keep it consistent. That's my two answers. And I'm a Leaf fan saying disallowed against Bernier. That's, keep that in mind. Dane? Um, I'm going to go off the board because I actually didn't see the game. Um, I'm just going to kind of speak to it. It's like the same rule with what's a catch and not a catch in the NFL these days. I think goaltender interference is the most inconsistent call in hockey these days. I look back to the Anaheim Oilers series last year with Kessler literally lifting up Talbot's glove in the crease there, which I, I still to this day don't know how that was allowed to be a goal. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, something that they really got to mitigate during the off season because, like, you see a play like that, that, like, you know, it's a love tap on the glove and it's not counted as a goal kind of thing with the Matthews. I think that's what you guys are speaking of. But you see something like what Kessler did against the Oilers in the playoffs last year, and that's still allowed to be a goal. And then the goaltender interference calls that – we had go against us that became no goals it just blows my mind so yeah there's no consistency with that it's the same thing with you know what's an nfl catch these days and not a catch so yeah something they got to fix last thing fellas and like i said the tap on the shoulder is coming so quick answer here just a yes or a no the vegas flu is that a thing and what's the vegas flu they're in first place and people can't catch vegas is vegas winning their division this year Justin, I, I mean, right now it looks like it. That's I'm saying yes. Dean, it's fifty some games in this season. I don't see why I should, you know, not think that they're going to be this. Like, you know, you look at LA is kind of dropped off a little bit. Anaheim's kind of picking things back up, but uh, yeah, I don't really think there's like any team that's really threatening Vegas to win her division right now, like Edmonton's division. So yeah, no, I think they're going to win the division this year. Though, that being said, they might lose in the first round of the playoffs just because it's, you know, Vegas in the first round of the playoffs. But, yeah, I think they're going to win the division. Another clean sweep, fellas, on that multiple choice. Still makes things listening, but I'm going to say yes. Vegas Golden Knights making and striking gold, winning their division. Fellas, it's been a great show. i got to remind everybody, I want to thank Boston Pizza. I want to thank Mitch Wilson. I obviously got to thank Aaron Grizdak as well on the staff here at Boston Pizza. The atmosphere at Boston Pizza has been great. Thank you, the listeners. Thank Jamie Henderson once again for coming by this evening. Obviously, my usual contributors, Dane to my right, Justin to my left, for being usual contributors, and Scott Nason, the board operator tonight, the notorious Scott Nason. Before we sign off, i got to remember to tell you, the Super Bowl, the big game party here at Boston Pizza. They have the door prize being a, a, a smart TV, a big TV is what I was told to say for the big game party. And after nine on weekdays, nine dollar schooners for Canadian Coors Molson products. You got half price starters. You got four dollar bar rails. You got a lot of opportunities. And don't forget that trivia question that happened this week. We got Christian Gassi winning the free large pizza last week. Uh, the prize will be announced next week for this week. When was Boston Pizza open in Sioux St. Marie is the question. You can reach me out. I've given those links on my email, Facebook. You can call Boston Pizza and talk to the management, and you can put your answer in there. And soon enough, you'll be able to answer on our website, which will be up by the end of this month, www.thegamesportshow.com. Monday, we'll be live at the Wicked Sisters, 6 p.m. to 7, live on 95.1, 7 to 8, pre-recorded. Come on by the Wicked Sister. Wednesdays, we'll be at Sports Center Bar and Grill. And this next Wednesday, we have a Super Bowl edition. We'll be at Sports Center Bar and Grill from 9.30 till 10.30. Then tonight, we went to the hour and a half realm here tonight here at Boston Pizza, but we're here every Thursday from 9.30 until 10.30, quarter to 11 range, where we have special guests on talking hockey and baseball. I think I summed up everything there, fellas. 
Dave McCaig here alongside Dane. Justin, Dane, for coming. thanks for coming on by. Oh, thanks for having me, everybody. Uh, enjoy the uh, NHL All-Star game this weekend. That's uh, sarcasm in my voice there. I like that. Justin, thanks for coming on by. And the big win by the Leafs tonight. Yeah, it was a good time coming out, and it was a good time watching the Leafs at Boston Pizza. like that. Come on by. Boston Pizza has great food, uh, and you're among friends at Boston Pizza for sure. To all out there, have a great night. It's Dave McCaig here signing off the Game Sports Show.